In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up an AI-powered email assistant that automatically handles customer login issues. By the end of this video, you'll have a system that frees up hours of your time each week, allowing you to focus on creating content and generating leads instead of getting bogged down in repetitive customer support tasks. So let's talk use cases here. How many times as a course creator have you received an email similar to this, which is an email that I've received? Hey, Mike and team, I've been trying to log in with no success. I've reset the password, but the new password isn't working either. So when you get these emails, you're usually doing one of two things. You're answering this yourself, which is a huge waste of your time. You should be out there creating content, generating leads and making sales, or you've outsourced this to a VA. So you're paying for their time. But what if there was a better way to handle with these kind of email requests? So for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using a tool called Lindy AI. This is not gonna be a deep dive into this tool, but think about this as basically having an AI virtual assistant, right? So it combines AI with automations. If you've ever played around with Zapier, it's similar to that, except AI is at the heart of everything. So we can ask it to do things on our behalf. We can set up automations. And in this video, we're going to ask Lindy to act as our email virtual assistant, to monitor our email, to look for certain questions that students are asking, to search a knowledge base of our company information and then to respond or draft a response on our behalf. But again, the best way to think about this is instead of having a virtual assistant, this is like an AI virtual assistant. So I'm gonna show you how to build out this AI virtual assistant step by step. But before that, I wanna just take a step back and show you exactly what we're doing here so you have a high level overview. Okay, so the way that this automation is gonna work is that the first thing is that Lindy or your AI agent is going to monitor your emails and I'll show you how to set that up, right? And then we have a condition here that says, because we don't want it monitoring every single email we get, that's gonna get expensive. We want it only monitoring emails about X, Y, Z. So that's a condition that we have set up and again, I'll get into that. Now, if it hits that condition, meaning if the email is about logging in, then it goes to the next step. N now, what I have is I've given Lindy a knowledge base about this fictitious example, right? So what that means is I have fed Lindy, and again, this is all fictitious right here. I have given Lindy or my AI assistant access to this knowledge about my fake course about TikTok, right? So in other words, Lindy knows information about how to log in. It knows information about what's in the course. It knows information about payment and refund, right? Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to respond knowledgeably on my, on my behalf. So this is what I love about Lindy is that we can give it, they call it a knowledge base, right? We're providing the AI with context. Then I have another condition. So this condition says, hey, if you have searched the knowledge base and you're able to come up with a response, meaning that the answer was found in here, then you can move on to the final step. And then the final step is that Lindy or the AI assistant will answer the customer support email on your behalf, and I'm gonna show you that. Now you can set it up where it saves it as a draft instead if you wanna be careful, but this is the overall workflow. It's really exciting. Um, we can save so much time instead of doing this uh, medial work ourselves. So let's actually dive in on how to set this up. So the way we're gonna do this is I am in kind of my home page dashboard area of Lindy, and I'm just gonna select new Lindy. And they have tons of templates, I should mention this, that can get you started on this. For the purpose of this video, I'm just gonna do start from scratch. And the first thing we need to do is select a trigger, which is how does this automation start or what starts this automation, right? And I'm just gonna rebuild this. So in this example, 
the way this automation starts is that we get an email to our inbox, okay? So Lindy has an integration with Gmail. So I need to find this email received trigger. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna select, select a trigger. I'm gonna, oh, Gmail is already up here, right here. Select Gmail and then click email received. Now, if this is your first time using it, and it probably is, you're gonna need to set up your integration with your Gmail account so Lindy has access to your Gmail. So once we have our Gmail connected, you can see this checkbox here, which I'm gonna check, filter events on this trigger. So the reason you wanna check this is because if you don't, then Lindy is gonna be constantly monitoring your Gmail for every single email that comes in your inbox and that's gonna get very expensive, right? Which, which they warn you about over here. So in other words, we only want to, in, in this example, we only want to look for emails where the email mentions logging in or access for this specific example. So I can come in here and say, you know, the body of the email contains access. And then I can do an, an or an or condition, the body of the email contains I'm gonna do logging for logging in, okay? And so this is really important because again, we only want to run actions and automations on emails that are about this topic, right? So again, the example we're using is a student doesn't know how to log in or they forgot to log in. And so these are the filters that I'm gonna set and hit save. So the automation will only continue if these words are contained in the email. Just one thing real quick. So I went to save the filter that I had put on, but Lindy doesn't like that there's nothing underneath this. So what I'm gonna do here is just put a condition up there first. And now when I hit save, it's gonna allow me to save those filters. So Lindy doesn't like that the email received is the only um, item in this automation. So if you're having trouble saving your filter, just put make sure that something is below that. All right, so with this condition, right, we need to set a condition where the AI is only gonna take action if the email is about our course. So we do have a filter, right, which says only go forward if the words contain access or logging, which is great, but a condition is basically another filter, right? It's kind of another way to say, hey, only continue if X, Y, Z. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select add condition and it's gonna say basically only continue if, and I have this on my clipboard here. So in this example, remember th this is a, a fake course, um, but what I'm saying here is only continue if the email that you have received is asking a question about your course, specifically regarding payment options, refunds, course access, or login issues. So this is basically a second filter because I could get an email um, that just randomly mentions the word access. That doesn't mean I want the AI agent to respond. That could be about anything. It could be spam. It could be a newsletter. It could be a marketing email, right? So this first level isn't enough. The condition is really the second level filter that says, hey, and this is where the AI kind of comes in here, right? Because we're basically telling the, the condition in an AI way, um, if it talks about my course, specifically about payment, refunds, access, or login, then you continue. So you can set that condition right over here. All right. So the next step is if it hits that condition, if we do get an email about this course and, and one of these issues, now we need to give the AI the answers, right? We, we need to give it information, right? And this is why AI agents or AI assistants are so much more powerful than ChatGPT because ChatGPT doesn't know anything about you or your business. So the way that we do this is I'm gonna hit this plus button and I am gonna do search knowledge base. So again, a knowledge base is all of the information that we can give Lindy about our business. So once I hit that, it's going to ask you to link your knowledge base somehow, right? So maybe it's a file, maybe it's just a text file. You can put your website on here, um, Google Drive, all of these integrations. I'm gonna hit Google Drive and 
here you can see that my Google account, my Google account is already linked. And now what I'm going to do is click to add a Google file. So I'm going to, again, my Google account is linked. I'm going to click add Google file. It's going to tell me that I'm connected to Google drive. If you're not, you have to connect your account there. And then it's going to basically go into your Google drive. And what I'm going to do is go find this knowledge base, right? For the purposes of this video, I just made this dummy knowledge base about my fake course. And again, how to get access, uh, the refund policy, all this other stuff, just so Lindy, again, has this information. So to think about it practically, you yourself as a, as a course creator, or as a content creator dealing with customers, you have information about your refund policy, about logging in, about yada, 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 Hopefully you have it in one place, but if you don't, it's definitely a good idea to get all of your documentation down on paper or down in Google Docs. So what I'm going to do here, where did, I, where did I go? I'm going to basically map this knowledge base, hit select, right? And you can see now that this uh, automation has access to this document, right? It's really cool. So I hit save there. And now we're, we're building out the automation. We're gonna get an email uh, with a filter. If it hits the condition, you know, they're, they're asking about logging in, then it's gonna go to the knowledge base and see if it has that knowledge in its knowledge base. All right, we need to keep going here. So we do need to set another condition, okay? And that condition is gonna be if the knowledge base found an email response, right? So, because remember, it could hit that first filter. It could mention the word logging. It could be about our course, which is this condition. So it keeps going. But what happens if the AI doesn't find the information in here, right? So that would be an opportunity to, to build out your documentation even further. But for the purposes of this, we need to add that condition, right? So only continue if you found an email response in the contents of the knowledge base. And then I'm gonna hit if it lets me save. All right, we are almost done here. So if it hits this last condition, then we're good to go. We, we need or we want the AI to send a response, right? So I'm gonna hit add step, perform an action, go back to Gmail and send a reply, okay? And now we have our options over here, so it's from this email address. You can pick your model here. I've got Claude Sonnet. Now, you a couple of safety measures here if you're a little worried about AI responding on your behalf. You can set this trigger to ask for confirmation. So Lindy will ping you um, asking for permission to respond. I'm gonna keep that off. All right, so this is where we can this is important, right? So what do we want to include in the body of the email? There's a couple of different ways that we can do this. This auto sets, or excuse me, it, it defaults to auto. Um, I like to have a little bit more control over this. So I'm gonna use AI prompt and then I've got a prompt here. So I'm prompting the AI how to response instead of giving it an actual response. Um, so you could say your job is to respond to the email using the knowledge base, I'm going to do the knowledge base of our company, user and product information. Pre-draft all replies in a concise, clear, readable format. Be succinct and never add additional information not found in the knowledge base. So I got this prompt from Lindy, uh, one of the Lindy templates to be clear. So that's for body um, reply to, what's going to go to the sender. All of this other stuff I'm going to leave... The, the two CC and BCC, I'm going to leave alone. I don't want Lindy in the signature. That should really be defaulted to off. And here's a, the second safety measure. I mentioned two of them. Uh, the second one is you can set this as a draft, which is probably a good idea if you want to review. So what Lindy will do, it will draft an email. And then when you go into your Gmail, instead of it being sent, it will be in your draft folder so you can read it over, you can make edits and you can send it. So that's probably a good option for the purposes of this video though. I'm gonna leave this off and then I'm gonna hit save. All right, so now our automation is complete and we are ready to test this. So what I can do is just go 
back to my tests here. And this is the Lindy that I just built. I didn't really mention this, but you know, Lindy acts both as a chat interface, like you're looking at right now, and also as an automation builder, which I've been showing you through this tutorial. I'm gonna show you this part in a second, but I'm gonna test out this to see if it works. So I'm using a different email address that I have, okay, my SEO email to send to my email address, this one that's being monitored by Lindy, okay? And here's, here's the email. So I'm saying, can't log in. Hey there, I'm having trouble logging into my account to access the course. So it's hitting on some of those filters that we talked about. Can you help me out? So this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna hit send. It's gonna take a second. That email is gonna hit my actual inbox. And then it's gonna take hopefully a couple more seconds and then Lindy's gonna get that email and start to process it, right? So hopefully this works. I'm gonna hit send, wait a couple seconds. All right, so the email has hit my Gmail inbox. I'm gonna go into Lindy and you can see it's already processing that email. So I can click in and what this view does is it shows us the task being run, right? So here's the email that I had just sent myself and now look, it's showing us the condition. Condition met. The email is asking a question about the course, specifically regarding payment, yada, yada, yada. Does it hit the second condition? Yes, you found, meaning the AI, you found an email response in the contents of the knowledge base. And then the action was the email was sent successfully. So here is the email that I got. Now, if I go to my sent email, right up here zero minutes ago this is the email that the ai just sent back to the student which was me right i'm sorry to hear you're having trouble logging into your account i'd be happy to help you with the issue here are the login instructions now importantly it's not hallucinating this it's grabbing this right from the knowledge base so again this is like having a trained virtual assistant just working in your back pocket if you've forgotten your password yada 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 if you're still having trouble yada 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 best regards now you can of course you know massage the email here meaning you can have a name um you can have this say whatever you want but you can see how helpful and 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 just a time saving this can be having this ai assistant in your back pocket so that worked flawlessly one thing that i'll add here um as a note is that that happened instantaneously which is not natural um meaning if you got a response in two seconds from a customer support you might think something's a little off so what you could do is add a new, I'm not gonna do it in this video, but there's a, I think it's called a sleep trigger or a sleep module where you can set a delay, right? So you can say, if it hits this condition, first wait five minutes or wait 10 minutes and then send a reply. So you'd put it in between these two actions just so it looks a little more natural um, because getting a response to your email literally within 30 seconds looks a little off. But I just hope this shows you the potential that these AI agents, these AI assistants have in your business, right? You need to get out of the busy work of being in your inbox and, and scheduling stuff and let AI handle these menial tasks for you. So again, you can focus on getting leads, you can focus on making sales, you can focus on creating content. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you wanna see some um, more videos, let me know what you have in mind.